It's a warm summer evening in July, and you're sitting on your back porch, roasting marshmallows over an open fire. Suddenly, you see a flash of light off in the distance that looks like lightning. You are confused by how this lightning was even possible, as you don't hear any thunder or see any storm below the apparent lightning. Of course, you say, this phenomenon is known as heat lightning and is just caused by the humid temperatures in the atmosphere. However, this heat lightning is just another fable like many other common weather myths that we have been told about for years. In this video, I'll be going over some of the most common and dangerous weather myths and misconceptions that many people still believe. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe to never miss any weather or storm chasing content. A myth is described as a widely held but false belief or idea. Myths are usually passed down through generations of people and tend to describe mysterious events, patterns, or phenomena that are hard to explain. The word myth derives from the Greek mythos, which has a range of meanings from word, through saying and story, to fiction. However, due to translation, most people consider its meaning as fiction due to basically being an antonym for the Greek word logos, which means something that can be proven logically. For example, one common non-weather myth is that bulls are agitated by the color red. This stems from matadors who wave red capes at bulls, which aggravated them into running at them. However, in reality, bulls are actually red-green colorblind and can't even see the color red. They are instead aggravated by the waving motions of the capes. Myths are extremely common, especially with the weather, due to random, unexpected events and phenomena that can cause people to speculate and come up with unscientific theories. Over the years, these incorrect theories have been spread throughout common dialogue and pop culture and have led to numerous generations of people believing false and sometimes even dangerous myths. Now that we've gone over the basics of what myths are, we're going to dive in some of the most commonly believed weather myths. Heat lightning. Heat lightning is commonly known as a special type of lightning that is purely caused by hot, humid weather, often seen flickering in the distance on summer nights. Over the years, people have come up with this catchy name to describe a simple phenomenon, which has stuck and been spread throughout generations. People say that this lightning is caused by warm, humid temperatures in the atmosphere and not by thunderstorms, which is where the myth goes wrong. There's no such thing as heat lightning, as lightning cannot form without a thunderstorm. Lightning occurs when static electrical charges build up due to interaction of moisture molecules and ice crystals in clouds. As these charges separate, a lightning channel develops, which is initially invisible and shoots towards the ground in rapid steps. When the channel connects with the ground, a massive release of energy occurs, heating the surrounding air to temperatures around 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The air acts as an insulator until the electric field becomes strong enough to overcome it, resulting in the discharge we see as lightning. So, without a thunderstorm, or even a cloud for that matter, lightning is physically impossible. Heat lightning is just regular lightning from a distant thunderstorm, too far away, often 10 to 15 miles, for thunder to be heard. Distant storms can produce lightning flashes that send light hundreds of miles into the air. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. The myth goes, lightning avoids striking the same spot more than once, so you're in a safe place if it's already been hit. However, lightning can strike the same place multiple times, especially tall or conductive objects. For example, the Empire State Building is struck about 23 times per year. Lightning tends to follow the path of least resistance, and prominent objects are repeated targets. People believe this myth because it's a comforting saying that suggests lightning is predictable, reducing fear of random strikes. It has also been used as a figure of speech beyond the weather. Now that we've gone over a few lightning myths, let's dive into some of the most widely known tornado myths. Opening windows in a tornado. The myth goes, opening windows during a tornado equalizes air pressure, preventing your house from exploding. However, this is dangerous and outdated advice. Tornado damage comes from high winds and flying debris, not internal pressure differences. Opening windows wastes critical time better spent getting to a safe shelter, like a basement or interior room. Modern research from the National Weather Service debunked this in the 1990s. The SPC said it best, Opening the windows is absolutely useless, a waste of precious time, and can be very dangerous. Don't do it. Early tornado science, pre-1970s, misunderstood pressure dynamics, and the advice stuck in popular culture. Tornadoes don't go into cities. The myth goes tornadoes avoid urban areas due to buildings, heat, or city infrastructure. 
However, tornadoes can strike anywhere, including cities. For example, urban areas like Dallas, Miami, St. Louis, and Nashville have been hit by tornadoes in recent decades. City heat and buildings don't significantly deter tornadoes, which are driven by atmospheric conditions. Many people believe this myth because urban tornadoes are less common due to the smaller land area of cities, so people assume these cities are immune. You are safer on a hill during a tornado. The myth goes that tornadoes can't climb hills or slopes, so hilly areas are safe from tornadoes. However, tornadoes can move over hills, ridges, and any terrain. A tornado's power comes directly from the rotating winds driven by atmospheric conditions, not ground features. Tornadoes have been documented in hilly regions like the Appalachians, as evident with recent violent tornadoes such as the London, Kentucky EF4 from 2025. The myth continues to exist because people assume physical barriers disrupt tornadoes, like they might slow water or wind in other contexts. When you're on the road, the best place to ride out a tornado is under a bridge or overpass. The myth goes that hiding under an overpass or bridge is safer due to the concrete wall surrounding you. However, although it might seem like a bridge over your head would protect you, hiding under an overpass or bridge is actually very dangerous because the tornado's winds can blast debris underneath the structure. The storm's winds will blow you out from underneath and possibly into the tornado itself, or the bridge could collapse on top of you, the SBC notes. Additionally, overpasses have been proven to actually accelerate tornado wind speeds due to a wind tunneling effect. The belief that overpasses provide safe shelter during tornadoes is a widespread misconception. The dangerous myth first gained traction after a 1991 news broadcast showed a crew taking shelter under an overpass during a tornado, leading many to believe it was a safe option. However, this has been proven to be false and potentially fatal. But if you're on the road, you don't want to stay in your car either. Vehicles are notorious as death traps in tornadoes because they're easily tossed around and destroyed, the SBC says. Your options depend on where the tornado is and what's around you. If the tornado is far away or not heading towards you, the best option may be to head the opposite direction and get out of its path. If it's bearing down on you and there's a sturdy structure nearby, definitely take shelter there. However, if there's no building around, get as far away from the road and cars as possible and lie down in a low spot. Tornadoes can't cross rivers and mountains. The myth goes that rivers and mountains act as barriers that tornadoes can't cross. Tornadoes can cross rivers, mountains, or valleys without stopping. For example, tornadoes commonly cross the Mississippi River and to move through mountainous regions like West Virginia. Terrain has very little impact on their path. In fact, the Rocky Mountains actually enhance tornado potential for much of Colorado due to increased low-level vorticity. This myth continues to be believed because natural features seem like logical barriers, and rural, flat areas where tornadoes are more common reinforce this belief. Green skies mean tornado. The myth goes that a green sky is a sure sign a tornado is coming. However, green skies can occur during severe thunderstorms without any tornado potential present. Many tornadoes form without green skies, and green skies can appear without tornadoes commonly. Green skies are common during the later evenings when the sun is at a lower angle in the sky and refracts the green color through the storm. The myth persists because the eerie green hue is memorable and associated with severe weather, leading to the assumption that it's a direct tornado signal. Now we're going to dive into some myths on other weather-related topics. Red skies at night, sailors delight. Red skies in morning, sailors warning. The myth goes that a red sky at night means good weather tomorrow, while a red sky in the morning predicts bad weather. This saying does have some truth. Red skies at sunset often indicate a high pressure system, or clear weather, moving in as sunlight scatters through the clear air. While red skies at sunrise can suggest a low pressure system, or storms, approaching. However, it's not always accurate, and weather systems are complex and vary by region. The myth continues to be believed because it's a catchy rhyme rooted in partial truth passed down through generations, especially among sailors and farmers. You can't sunburn on a cloudy day. The myth goes that clouds block all UV rays so you can't get a sunburn on an overcast day. However, up to 80% of UV rays can penetrate clouds, especially thin or scattered ones. So, you can still get sunburned, especially during prolonged outdoor exposure, even if it's not sunny, especially in the summer months. 
This myth is dangerous because clouds create a false sense of protection and people don't feel the sun's heat as strongly on overcast days. Cold weather causes colds. The myth goes that being out in cold or wet weather causes you to catch a cold. However, colds are caused by viruses, not cold temperatures. Cold weather may increase indoor gatherings, spreading viruses more easily, but the cold itself does not cause illness. The myth continues to exist because people associate being chilly or wet with getting sick, reinforced by seasonal cold and flu spikes in the winter. Many of these myths have been passed along for years and continue to confuse people and even cause people to get into dangerous situations. Now that you all know the truth about these myths, you can help share the message and inform people. So, the next time someone tells you about heat lightning or hiding under an overpass in a tornado, you can politely inform them of the truth. Anyways, thank you all for so much for watching. Um, if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Additionally, if you'd like to help support the channel any further, um, become a channel member today and receive numerous behind the scenes content and uh, other things like that. Um, but anyways, thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.